All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. We got a 462. Uh, this is a good example to talk about some of the things that you guys might not think about when you start adding a lot of power to these saws through port work, machining, mods, you know. Uh, I'm pretty sure if, you did, if you're chalking just a muffler and intake mods, filter, uh, bolt-on, we'll call it, you wouldn't run into this per se, but this is something that you will run into when you get into the real, you know, the real down and dirty builds where you're you're putting a, a lot more torque to the parts that they were designed for. And yes, they are designed to handle more than the saw comes with stock, you know, just to just to be adequate enough in case there are problems, but certain things like clutch springs, uh, things you might not think of like chain tensioners, stuff like that. That stuff isn't really over-designed. Uh, recoils is another one. So I like to plug the decomps in, in saws. One thing you, you will, you'll see though is you'll wear out the plastic starter pawls. Those are the two plastic pawls in the, in the starter system. Maybe I'll pop this off and show you what I'm talking about. But that's, you know, there's give and take to everything. But this saw came back, he was having problems with the chain stalling out. I, sh I, was, I shouldn't say the chain stalling out, but he, he was making a cut and the saw would stall out. And it was one of two saws that, that came back uh, all of last year. So that's pretty good. Only had two saws come back. You know, I do quite a, quite a few saws. And the other one was a 500i. That one actually was a nightmare, but got them both sorted out. This, this was... Basically, uh, either, you know, and this is no offense, my man, if, if you're watching this and we talked about this, you know, I got to, I got to shoot straight and I'm not saying it was necessarily him that did it, but we'll talk about it when we get the clutch off, but it was, it was either it got, the clutch got glazed over from operator error or it was a defective part. You know, and when I say operator error, you got to be real careful saying that um, because, you know, some people take offense to that, but I never mean to offend anybody. As a mechanic, you have to be honest. You have to tell people what you think. You can't be worried about hurting feelings. Otherwise, you're not solving the problem. Um, when I was at the dealership doing service and repairs, people had a huge problem with this. But I cannot tell you how many times that I, I won people over by just telling the truth, by just flat out telling the truth. Even if we screwed something up, trust me, I had my fair share of dipshit mechanics and, you know, they didn't pay very well. I was the only one that was certified and, you know, I, I pretty much ran the shop and I got help that was getting paid 10 bucks an hour. I mean, you're not going to get the best help. So yeah, there was problems. When we screwed something up, I was honest about it. When they screwed something up, as in the customer, I was honest about it. That's the only way to do it. You got to take the whole feelings out of it. With that said, I if I was to have a gun pointed to my head and said, you know, what's your what's your theory? I would say that it, it was defective because the clutch was completely glazed over, uh, and then they get really hot. They get purple and I'll show you, so this, this has uh, about two tanks ran through it after uh, putting a different clutch in it. And you can still see that it got a little bit hot, but the problem uh, has gone away. So this is a new clutch, clutch drum. Obviously when I say clutch, it's the whole clutch assembly. Uh, the, God, what the hell do they call that? That washer back there? I think they call it a a spacer, clutch spacer, but everything on the clutch side of it, even the worm gear is new. I don't mess around.
And the customer was adamant. You know, we were on the same page with this. If I was at the dealership doing a warranty claim, it would all be replaced. This is not going to be under warranty. This is the customer just wants to pay for it. And technically, steel wouldn't cover this, and I wouldn't blame them under warranty because this is a ported saw. This saw is pretty rowdy. Uh, this is the one I had the 32-inch bar on, and uh, it was in a couple of videos I did. So, you know, cutting side-by-side -side maple logs, I think that was maple. It was harder stuff, but I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty rowdy. So... I did a bunch of test cutting with it. I tried to stall it out basically, and I did stall it out. You will, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care how powerful your saw is. You can stop any, any chain on any saw, you know, you dog it in enough. You're going to stall it out. Um, but everything was replaced, even this needle cage bearing. So that would eliminate everything. You have two choices, basically the way that I'm, the way that I look at it. You can do clutch springs and try to sand the, the shoes and go in here and sand that. But when you're talking about a, uh, you know, what are these saws? Let's say two grand at least probably once it's all said and done with the port work, the saw, you know, the, the bolt-on mods. Uh, this has the West Coast filter, bark box, the West Coast dogs, and my sticker, which is damn expensive. And, uh, you know, it's an expensive saw. Are you really going to sand clutch shoes and do all that stuff? No, you're not going to do that stuff. You're going to fix it right. You're going to replace all the parts. And it completely took care of it. Now, where I was going with this to in the beginning, and I totally got off track. Hey, I got to get those watch hours and the, the ad revenue and all that stuff somehow. So rambling is the key. Uh, we're going to talk about a few things, though. Don't worry. Um, when you add power to these saws, you are going to have parts that are going to wear faster, clutches being one of them. I have seen chain tensioners break, um, you know, clutch springs. Uh, these bar plates, for some reason, those those wear fast. The, you know, you can have AV mount issues. Um, stock air filters seem to do terrible with ported saws. I don't know if it's just because they're sucking in so much more air. Like I said, starter, starter pulleys, or uh, pawls and pulleys. And uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Will this one has the decomp plugged? So this might be a good, good saw to pull the recoil off of, just to see what this one's looking like. Because it doesn't have a whole lot of time on it. You can see it's. I mean, it's pretty, pretty nice looking saw. Pretty new. When you pop a recoil off, if you want to, you can keep those three bolts in it. Well, actually, not this one because I'm going to check these starter pulls. So, yeah, they look really good. Let me blow them off quick. They might have a little bit of... No, nah, they're pretty good. And I don't run super high compression uh, compared to some other people. And, again, I'm not saying that my way is the best. I'm not saying that, that their way is the best. I'm just saying this is how I do it. But, again, I do a dome piston. And that is a little bit different. Uh, the dome piston behaves different. And, uh, you know, they work good. So there's the West Coast filter. Put it on start. We're going to pop this filter off too. Uh, this thing is pretty much cleaned. Ooh, I need filter oil. So that, this here's another thing. Uh, I do, I, I kind of oil them a little more than I used to. And this is from Jacob Rogers. He, he showed me how he oils them and he just soaks them. And his filters, he, let's be honest, Jacob, if you're watching this, he uh, doesn't maintain, he doesn't maintain his filters very well, but they were perfect. And he had tons of stuff on it. I mean, it wasn't that bad, but, uh, so the, do I have a intake baffle anywhere? I don't think I do. Um, that would be awesome. Oh, let me see if I can find one. Hold on. Okay, so this is a uh, different 461, and I'll show you what I'm talking about on this. And with the West Coast filter, which is a way better setup. So, can you see both saws? Now, with the West Coast filter, once you remove, this is a twist lock filter, you can remove this entire baffle, and that you have to take off with the, the eight millimeter 
Uh, you got two nuts, eight millimeter. Here's another one, that, another trick. Jesus, butter fingers. Sorry, I still got my cough and runny nose and shit. Um, my hands are dirty. I machined down a, um, you know, a, a deep well socket. And here's another trick. If you, if you don't have a lathe and you want to machine something down, here's a, I should charge for this trick. This is a pretty good one, guys. So you can put it in, uh, you got some paper that I actually do something. No, not really. But uh, you can put it in a drill or impact, whatever, and then you want to know which way your file runs. And just run it on your file. Drill would probably work better and then take it off of this. So I'm just saying if you got if you're you really need to do something like that. Oops. I mean, how bad do you want it? That's basically it. You know, it's gonna take some time, it's gonna take some work. But if you don't got a lathe and you want to machine one down, but that's what it's gonna take to fit down in here. I always put these on start before you let anything fall in there. These ones I think they do stay in here, yeah. So then you would just put these back on. And then you can run the West Coast filter because you don't need this twist lock. It just goes on with a hose clamp like that. So I'm gonna clean that off, but uh, I just might as well put this back on here. But just know that if you, I think it's, a, it's better anyway without the baffle. Yeah, but if you're gonna run the West Coast filter, it allows you to take that off. I would say it allows you to because it definitely is an advantage. And you have like an intake stack and it's way better than this filter. And uh, as far as I know, I don't think they make a, like a max core or anything, but it's a uni filter. It's, you know, the oil style filter. They work amazingly well. So kind of a, a pretty rad bolt on part. It's going to give, if you're after, I was just talking with uh, Joe Scissorhands, I think is his name, uh, YouTube name. And he and I were kind of going back and forth in the comments. He's a member actually. So, uh, we were talking about max flows and I get some people don't like max flows. Some people love them. And some, some people like me are not after performance. I'm really not for the max flows. I'm after a filter that is going to eliminate debris ingestion. It's going to catch the fine particles from dull chains from, you know, sometimes people cut this really hard wood. Like we have it out here. It's called locust. Uh, black locust is really bad. This shit is so hard that I don't care what kind of chain, you can't even run square ground chain on it. Uh, I've tried and I got guys that really know what they're doing, sharpening my, my square ground chain. And y you know, you're almost better off with freaking, uh, that anti kick stuff. It sounds stupid, but the shit is so hard, but you can't get chips off of it. You're going to get that fine dust no matter what. And that is a way better setup, the foam oiled filter. So you know, I even, I even told Joe, like I would run a max flow, even if it, if it robbed a little performance, as long as it didn't hurt the saw. And, uh, it's because of that. It's because of the debris ingestion. It's to keep particles off the intake. So that's my two cents on that. Uh, I'm going to clean everything out on this, throw this saw back together. And then, uh, I will probably start it up you know, drain the fluid, start it up, run it dry, all that good stuff. And then I always pop the oil and fuel caps after, rinse them out. If you're going to ship saws, you cannot have any oil in them. Uh, I even kind of get nervous oiling the filters on them because I've had issues with shipping and little surprise inspections and, uh, you know, they'll hold a saw because it's got a little bit of oil on it. So one thing to, to think about, but now yeah, let me get this thing back together and, uh, I'll start it up and we'll make sure it still runs. So I got everything cleaned off. Uh, I treat things situational, especially something like this. Of course, there's like carb kits, uh, stuff like that. I'm going to have a basic method that I follow every time. But with this, everything was replaced. Since everything was replaced, it's looking really good. It performed really well. Did a lot of testing, worked it really hard. Uh, 
nothing is getting hot. Uh, another thing I was going to say why I don't think the chain break was left on. A lot of people are probably going to say, oh, you left the chain break on. And you ran. None of this around here got hot. Uh, the clutch got hot. So it makes me think that it was something either in the spacer, the worm gear. I've seen all kinds of stuff. You know, it is something just a little bit too much material from factory somewhere. I really don't think this one was operator error. I would be completely honest if I thought it was. But I'm not going to pop the clutch off because I think if taking things off when you don't need to, something like a clutch especially, it's not necessary. Don't do it. Um, a couple things. When I clean these out, and I have the clutch drum off, I'll pop the brake and I'll blow everything out in here. Uh, some people might not agree with that, I don't really care. Uh, and then I'll make sure all that crap's out of there and then I'll set the brake, release the brake, and then make sure this is going all the way, this brake band is going in where it's supposed to go. It's free. You wanna make sure this oiler uh, worm gear, this arm pinion gear uh, moves freely, it does, you know, that washer underneath, the spacer, whatever you want to call it, is in the right spot, or the right way, I should say. Um, there's a top and a bottom to that. They make it pretty simple. It says top on it. I do grease these, and you've probably heard me talk about grease and my uh, theories on grease. I think a lot of times it collects it collects dust and dirt and shit like that. So in, in some places, it's not, you know, some places people will grease, and I, I'm against it, but I always grease this needle cage bearing. Uh, I think it's pretty necessary. Obviously people know that the little slot lines up with that arm and that clutch drum will drop in there. If you don't hit the arm, you'll be like this and it won't be on there. See now it's on there all the way. Make sure this, this spins freely. It doesn't spin. It releases. So everything in there is good. And then we put the sprocket back on. I have OCD, so I always put it the same way. And so with this, I don't know if this is really a trick to this, but every time I take one of these off and put it on, I just give it, I'm not bending it. I'm talking just a tiny bit of pressure. Just give it a little bit of pressure so it's it's staying closed. And this is how I put it on. I just This plier just works really good. But I snap on for a reason, right? And then, you know, push it down if you need to, rotate it, just make sure the damn thing's on there. So, awesome. I blew the filter off from, you know, the inside out. Not real crazy. I don't like to blow hard on the, this foam because I do not have filter oil, so I'm not going to clean it. Otherwise, I normally I would clean it. I got everything blown out in the recoil and, you know, got the saw cleaned off. So to send it back, I'm going to dump the oil before I start it because it's going to, it's going to run a little bit, but it's not going to hurt it because I want to get as much of the oil out as I can. And I have even ran a little bit of mixed gas in it and got the, got the oil out, but I felt it was necessary, but this one, we're just going to clean it out really good. It's going to sit a couple days or a day before I send it back. i got to get a hold of them. Um, and Ken, this is your saw if you know if you're watching this. So I'll have to get this thing back to you. I don't know if I can even get on Instagram yet. I probably got a million messages. But yeah, she's ready to go. You're 462 with clutch problems. I only had one, so you know who you are, buddy. And uh, yeah, you owe me six million bucks. Wasn't too bad. So, cash check, gold bars, IOUs. It's all the same. Let's see if I got fuel in it. I'm gonna say I should have fuel in it. I just ran it. And then the way I do the fuel is I'll start it up. I'll get it warm. And as it's running, then I'll pop the cap and dump the fuel out and then let it run dry. I don't like to drain the fuel out of the tank before I start it because then right away when you start it, it wants to start dying out. And then you want to run it with the cover and everything on, because that's how he's going to be running it when he gets it back. So I don't need to do a M-Tronic reset, anything like that. So I will have to turn the exhaust fan on. Leave the side cover off. And then you guys are going to get to make fun of me. They always made fun of me on Instagram, because I always wear shorts when it's warm out. But... You're just jealous because I got nice legs. I know it.
Okay, we recording? All right. So, not in start position. It is cold, obviously. I really do not think that this was operator error. I think it was either a defective part as far as uh, not not necessarily assembly. I mean, it could have been, but you know, it could have been just a, a part out of spec and it got hot. I don't think it was ran with the brake on just from what I've seen in the past and you know, knowing what I know and evaluating the whole situation, talking to the customer. There's a whole there's a whole bunch of things that come into play. You talk to the customer and they don't even understand what a chain brake is. And you see the plastics burnt around the, the brake band and clutch drum. Yeah, they probably ran it with the chain brake. Talk to a guy that knows what he's doing and is running through the procedures with you. Try to fix it over the phone and through messages and videos. That didn't do it, so send it back. We'll take care of it. You know, could have pushed it through warranty probably, but steel's good to me and talk to the customer again. Yeah, always communicate with the customer for stuff like this, especially, and, uh, you know, make sure you guys are on the same page. So we both were on the same page, just replaced everything. Not going to try to push it through warranty. You know, it is a ported saw, extra stress on the parts. I get it, but did a lot of other 462s, didn't have this problem, but it's a runner. So definitely was not the, you know, the saw. I always worry that, you know, something happened with the port work or the cylinder, or we got low compression or some damn thing. Definitely not that. She runs great. I hope I have a video in here of the clutch and how absolutely <laughs> purple it was. Uh, it was bad. So either way, guys, that's my video for today. I'm just kind of trying to get caught up a little bit. So I figured I'd record this one because it's kind of a little different. And uh, there you go. Stay rowdy, my friends. I need to get the damn air conditioner back in here. I have a, you know, one of those window air conditioners and holy shit do i need it it's finally hot in minnesota so you stay rowdy i'm gonna try to stay cool we'll see you next time all right guys so i try to pay it forward a bit you know uh, when i see something a different channel or someone doing something really cool i always get the okay for them or from them you know just to make sure it's cool but you got to check this channel out uh just watch this little video i have put together and uh Give this guy some subscribers because <laughs> I don't know how YouTube's algorithm screwed the pooch on this, but I've never been suggested this guy's channel. A lot of you probably know him, but just just check this out. So here's his channel. I'll throw the link in the description, but uh, that is not enough subscribers because this guy is doing crazy stuff. I mean, look at this. Welding on a crank, doing something to a 462. I don't even know what the hell he's got going on, but this right here, well... I could totally explain it because I have totally got the knowledge, but I'll let him explain it. We cut the fuel pump off of another carb and we stacked it. I'm sorry, what did you say? And we stacked it on regular carb, effectively making a, a double pumper. <laughs> you got double pumpers?
Do it all the time. Their pump on top of the original pump, and it worked. It holds fuel now on the top end, and it took a lot of work to do this, but it does work. We ran it today. Made a cut with it, too. It still didn't lean out, but here's kind of what we got. It's kind of a mess of fuel lines. It's probably what I would have done. I'm just saying. I mean, it, you know, probably would have done a triple pumper, but doubles all right, I guess. No, uh, what? Like, dude, you can do that? Uh, this might come as a surprise to you guys. Uh, I've never thought of doing that. I didn't know you could do that, and I never will do that. Big a bow, my man. Literally, hats off to you, because that shit is cool. And check his channel out. <laughs> what the hell? Dude, uh, pretty sweet. Um, like he said, it took a long time and it was a lot of work. I bet it was. I bet it was. But if you want to find the ins and outs of the race saws, which I'm starting to get into, and I'm nowhere near this guy's level, but uh, check his channel out. I mean, holy shit. Uh, still watch my channel because I'm cool. I'm cool too. I got nitrous. And that's about it. But uh, no, I really appreciate guys that do that, that show the ins and outs. The race saw world is very secretive. You think the porting world is secretive? Shit. That ain't nothing. You need to like have the secret handshake or something to get into these uh, race saw builds. But my man is sharing the builds. And again, hats off, dude. Check the, check the guy's channel out. Give him some subscribers. Uh, you know, he, he deserves it. So hope he does some more videos. Kind of a little bit of talk I did with him. He's kind of, he likes doing it, but you know, everybody's busy, you know, they're not going to do it if, it, if there's no payoff. So show him some love, maybe get his channel monetized. That'd be awesome. I more than deserves it guys. So let's share the love. All right, guys. See you next time. i to show up double pumper. Hey, it's my double pumper. I'm the double pumper guy. Jesus Christ, why don't you get a double pumper tattoo? You show, oh shit's still on.